When you think about heat, you're probably thinking about heating your home or car, but managing heat is at the core of the design of almost everything around you. And besides being one of my favorite subjects as an engineer, it's also a bit misunderstood. I wanna show you something really cool about heat transfer. And to demonstrate, I got my son Remington to help me. Come on over here, Remy. Okay, here's your question. I have this piece of wood and I have this piece of copper, okay? Now I want you to touch them and tell me which one is colder, okay? So touch the wood first. Okay, just touch, just like that, okay? Now touch the copper, here, right there, okay? Which is colder? This one. This is colder? Yes. Why? Because of it's like metal is colder and wood is hotter. Well, he's close. Well, the truth is both of these things have been in this room for 24 hours. They're the exact same temperature. And the reason why the copper feels colder is it's a much better conductor of heat. So your hand is 98 degrees Fahrenheit. That copper is around 70. That 20 degree delta is big enough that the heat from your hand flows to the colder side of the copper. Whereas on the wood, which is also at 70 degrees, it's a much slower conductor of heat. So today let's explore how heat transfer plays a vital role in the design of almost everything around us and look at some breakthrough materials like 3M's boron nitride cooling fillers and how it enables some pretty amazing next generation products. I'm Ricky and this is 2 of Inchi. Huge thanks to 3M for working with us to make another awesome video highlighting some of their amazing climate innovations. There are three forms of heat transfer. One, conduction, the transfer of heat within an object or two objects in contact. Two, convection, is the transfer of heat in a bulk movement of molecules within fluid, such as a gas or a liquid. Third, and lastly, we have thermal radiation, which is electromagnetic radiation generated by the thermal motion of particles and matter. Let's start with our homes and see how we can maximize comfort and lower our energy bills. If our goal is to keep our home around 75 degrees or 24 degrees Celsius, that's really easy when the temperature outside is also 75. But as temperatures start falling in the winter, the warmer air inside your home will start to flow to the outside. And the opposite is true in the summer. If your home is made of wood, you'll likely find insulation between the studs. This insulation has much lower heat transfer rates than the wood, helping to slow the transfer of heat. For example, in my house, I have 2x4 construction, and the wood has an R value, or resistance to heat loss, of 1 per inch. So 2x4 is an R4, but the insulation between the walls is typically around an R13, much better. So therefore, the better the insulation you have, the slower the heat will transfer. This is why newer homes have much thicker walls. Matt Farrell, my friend from Undecided, is building his house as we speak right now, and his walls are 15 inches thick. A similar strategy is also used in thermoses like this one to keep your drinks hot or cold. But instead of insulation, they work by creating a vacuum cavity within it. And without any air molecules, there's no conduction or convection. The metal is connected over this rim, for example. So there is heat transfer from the inside to the outside. But between the walls here, they're isolated with no air within a vacuum. And as a result, this can keep your drinks hot or cold for hours. But this vacuum also causes the air pressure inside to be much lower. So it's going to want to want to crumple in on itself. And this is why most thermoses are made out of metals. This is a heat sink, and this is used to keep your computer processor cool while it's running. So in the case of your thermos, the heat comes from the hot liquid that you supply. In the case of a computer, the heat comes from billions of transistors switching back and forth at 3.5 gigahertz or whatever the speed of your computer is. So the base of your heat sink makes contact with the CPU. And then these heat pipes that you'd see running up in here take all that heat and transfer it up into these fins. And these fins have a huge amount of surface area. And as air from a fan blows over it, the heat from that CPU is sucked up into the fans and then convection, the cooling from the air, blows over the fins and cools off your computer. A similar application is also used in cars, like in a radiator. In the case of internal combustion cars, front grills house radiators, where coolant is piped through the engine components, warming up, and then pumped through a radiator where it is cooled via convection by incoming air from the front of the car. And when it comes to cars, these grills seem to be getting bigger and more distinctive every year. In fact, I would argue that this grill, which is actually an engineering application, a design consideration made 
not for the car, but for the function of that engine has become the most iconic part of modern car design. So you're probably starting to see that managing heat is a central tenant to engineering design and it's all around us. In a more high-tech application like electric cars or computers, this thermal management becomes really critical. That's because now we don't just have to worry about heat, but also electricity, which gets us to a very interesting relationship in most materials. Most really good thermal conductors, like this copper, are also really good electrical conductors. Aluminum and copper, for example, are both good at both. In contrast, Thermal insulators like wall insulation or ceramic are not only poor thermal conductors, but they're also poor electrical conductors. And this relationship can be a bit of a problem when it comes to electronics. If you think about circuits or the leads of a battery, it's crucial that they remain isolated. If the positive and negative leads of the battery came into contact, you'd have a short circuit and <laughs> major problems. This is why electric wire is housed in a protective, non-conductive sheathing to keep wires separate. But there's still a problem. One of the biggest enemies of electronics is heat. It causes electronic components to fail prematurely. But most electrical insulators are poor thermal conductors, which would trap the heat in like a blanket. And this is where 3M's boron nitride cooling fillers are kind of a game changer. They are great electrical insulators, but also great thermal conductors. And this characteristic has some pretty amazing possibilities for future electronics, EV batteries, and so much more. Take for example, this computer motherboard. It's full of transistors, capacitors, and other sensitive electronic equipment that gets really hot. But as you can see here, they're all often exposed and at a risk of debris falling in and causing short circuits. But because these various components get so hot, you can't just cover them in a traditional electrical insulator. And this would be a perfect use case for 3M's boron nitride cooling fillers. At its core, 3M boron nitride cooling fillers are in a family of advanced ceramic materials used to help improve thermal conductivity in polymers while maintaining or improving electrical insulation. Boron nitride is often referred to as white graphite because it has a hexagonal structure just like graphite does. But the difference is graphite is a thermal and electrical conductor, whereas boron nitride is electrical insulator and thermal conductor. The 3M boron nitride cooling fillers are engineered to line up easily and to form bridges that conduct heat in the direction of their orientation. Here's how 3M's boron nitride cooling fillers compare in terms of thermal conductivity to other commonly used materials. And here's a look at how they compare in terms of electrical conductivity. And this combination is kind of a game changer. In previous videos, we've discussed how companies are building digital twins of the earth, where we can try to better understand and predict weather conditions and other variables in our world. But to do this, we'll need sensors that can withstand harsh weather without degrading. Bare circuits like this on our computer motherboard just won't work. We'll need materials that can provide electric isolation from the elements and water and anything else that could cause short circuits. But for reliability in the field, these sensors will also have to dissipate all that heat that they're gonna to produce to maximize operational life. And if this win-win wasn't enough, 3M's boron nitride cooling fillers are also super low density, which means low weight, and the potential for weight savings is really important in electric vehicles and batteries. Thermally conductive materials are used throughout the vehicle. Things like potting resins, heat spreaders, glues, greases, and thermal interface materials. Thermal management solutions are needed in electric motors, batteries, sensors, ECU, electronics, and even headlamps so more cars can turn to LED lighting. When it comes to batteries, any weight required for outer casings or thermal interface materials is weight that doesn't increase energy storage and therefore energy density. As companies race to find better and better cathode and anode chemistries, they'll also have to look at how they can better manage heat and save weight. And that's exactly where these cooling fillers come in. Waste savings result in higher energy densities, which means more kilowatt hours per energy storage given a certain amount of weight. But an equally important component of batteries is their thermal management overall. Early EVs that didn't have active cooling in their packs were prone to overheating and early energy degradation. But as the technology matured, 
we now see cooling ribbons that run along outside the battery packs to transfer heat via conduction into the ribbon and then convection out from the fluid to a radiator, just like an old fashioned internal combustion engine. But that's the outside of each cell in a battery pack. But it's just as important to have really good thermal conduction inside the battery cells to eliminate any hot spots and have more even heat profiles. 3M is one of those companies you've probably heard of, but don't see directly because their breakthrough material science and innovation goes inside the products we love. But their boron nitride cooling fillers had the potential to really be an engineer's best friend in terms of heat management. Did you also know that 3M has a goal of going carbon neutral by 2050 and aims to cut its 2019 levels of greenhouse gas emissions 50% by 2030. The company is proud that it has already reduced its greenhouse gas emissions 72% since 2002. So it's great to see so many innovations and commitments to a more sustainable future from 3M. You probably don't spend a lot of time thinking about heat and thermal management, but as an engineer, that's pretty much day one our jobs is to handle heat, whether it's for comfort, like in your house or your car, whether it's the waste product of a thing like an internal combustion engine, which is only 30% efficient. And while EVs are way better, closer to 90, 95% efficient, they still do make heat. Anytime you have motion, you have heat. And as that builds up in something, it'll slowly start to wear out things prematurely. So what do you guys think? Did I miss a few examples of ways that heat transfers at the core of good design around the products that we love every day? Sound off in the comments below. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I have a feeling you'll like this video as well. Till next week, I'm Rico Tiba Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.